tonight. Earthquake in Mexico, heat waves in the UK and the rest of the Northern Hemisphere, and the development of a potential tropical cyclone near Indonesia. And welcome to another episode of Weather Beat. Yes, we're back at long last, and we're hoping to do this Weather Beat weekly on Wednesdays. It all makes sense, doesn't it? Wednesday weekly weather beats, or weather beat Wednesdays, as I'd like to call them. My name is Nathan Foy, and tonight we're talking about a few things um, that have come up in the world of natural sciences in the last week. Now, first, you may have seen the news yesterday of a magnitude 7.4 earthquake that occurred in southern Mexico in the uh, province of Oaxaca. Joining me tonight to talk about that is Cesar Gámez, our Mexico correspondent, very well established with Force 13. It's been a while since we last spoke, hasn't it? It, it has been uh, a lot, Nathan. Absolutely fantastic to be back here. I'm pretty, pretty humbled to be there with you again. And yeah, it has been a really, well, scary situation for a lot of people in, in the state of Oaxaca and Mexico City as well. Mexico City is a pretty uh, sensible place for earthquakes, and that earthquake in particular has been felt very strong as well. Mm. Fortunately, there weren't damages in Mexico City, but in Oaxaca has been reported a lot of structural damages, including the, uh, the unfortunate six people, uh, well, uh, have been pronounced dead at the scene. All right, so it's it six at this point. Um, do we think yeah. that number might continue to rise, or do we think it's over and done with? Well, I, w I would like to think that it's over. I mean, the damages weren't too high, fortunately, but uh, a lot of uh, structural damages are well are se were seen yeah. in, in, in that place. So maybe some objects have, well, you know, hit some people in sensible places that, you know, generated those uh, injuries for them. Now, this was the uh, first magnitude 7 earthquake in the area within around 150 kilometer radius since 1999. So it's been quite a while since there's been a big earthquake in this particular area. Do people prepare for these things in that particular province or is it something that other places in Mexico are more well versed with. How is it over there? Well, Oaxaca is not a place that is particularly well prepared for such strong earthquakes, but they have some certain kind of system that is actually uh, effective for some middle magnitude earthquakes. Um, fortunately, this particular wasn't too bad for the damages, but of course it, well, it was a very scary situation. This could, uh, this could be an example of, uh, of certain improvements have to be, has to be made, uh, because you know, uh, it was something that hasn't been happening since 1999. So that's why probably it's something that we should take. Uh, well, very, very careful in the in the yeah. in the future. And you didn't feel it, did you? Fortunately, I don't live in a place where earthquakes are present. Uh, currently, I'm in Monterrey, but I'm living as well in the province of Guanajuato, in the city of Leon, which is some kind, which is 500 uh, miles uh, away yeah. from where I currently am. And a lot of mountains and, in the way as well. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. There's a lot of mountains. And Leon is not a place that earthquakes are felt as well, but it's closer to Mexico City. All right, Cesar, thanks very much for joining us. You're going to be tracking hurricanes with us this year. Absolutely, I'm pretty <laughs> well. I'm pretty excited of what we are going to see. I mean, not in the good mm. way. We are expecting a very active season in the Atlantic, so of course it could it should be a very serious point to take in uh, of yeah. attention. You know. Definitely. But, well, what, let's see what, what's going to happen in the future. We certainly will. Thanks for joining us, Cesar. Thank you so much, Nathan. Along with the main channel, Force 13 is delivering news on several regional channels as well. The Australia and Oceania channel, the UK and Ireland branch, 
and the US and Caribbean Force 13 branch as well. You can find all of these on our channel page on the right hand side. So something that we often talk about at least once a year over on these shores in the UK at least is one of those good old fashioned heat waves and we've got another one right now. Um, temperatures soaring up to the high 20s into the lower 30s in many parts of the UK, um, particularly in England and Wales and that is set to continue um, over at least the next day or two. Um, and to talk about that and heat waves over the wider northern hemisphere today is Kay. Hello. How are you Hello. today? I am better now that it's not the heat. The heat's gone now. <laughs> we're not used to it, are we, still? No. It keeps happening, but we're still not used to it. Our June average temperature is something around 19 degrees Celsius. That's maximum. And we've had temperatures today of around 31 degrees at 413 HQ, around the same at your place? Yes, it was fairly similar. It was a long peak, though. It a was, long um, peak. peak temperature was about five, six hours at the same temperature. Wow, really? And it's quite evenly yeah. distributed, isn't it, as well, across uh, England and Wales at least, and even more so tomorrow by the sounds of things. Yes. Well, the um, focus of the heats will be in um, western England into Wales, where it could be hitting 34, according to the Met Office. Yeah. And it could be reaching similar temperatures in London. Naturally, uh, London is one of the hottest places, um, and you usually get one or two other locations around there as well. Usually you're talking about Cambridgeshire or Kent, those are the hot places in the last uh, year, um, the two last records. Uh, but also, there is, you know, parts of the western area um, can get those very high temperatures as well and northwest today here where we are was one of the hottest places too so looking forward over the next few days Kay um, the heat wave how long is that going to last not very long from what I've seen it's going to last for Thursday for the whole country it could be hitting 30 in Glasgow in Scotland really wow yep so 30s from the south coast in, well into Scotland high 20s mid high 20s in Northern Ireland um, but Thursday night a cold front is going to start approaching the country and that will end the heat wave by Saturday afternoon uh, Friday could still see hot temperatures in the um, central and eastern parts of England Okay. because the cold front will not quite have reached there by Friday and then it all but, breaks um, down doesn't it what's going on at the weekend yeah. This is a vigorous cold front, and as it moves through Thursday night into through Friday and into Saturday, it's going to be bringing a very severe outbreak of thunderstorms across the entirety of the British Isles. Wonderful, <laughs> great, more thunders. We've already had we had five days of thunderstorms in a row earlier this month. I know, and I managed to get missed by many of them. <laughs> I hear it all the time, but nothing actually hit us. It was. And there's even more underwhelming and surprising. Well, yeah. uh, surely, pretty much everywhere will have been hit by the time we get to the end of this, by the start of next week. It seems that way. It seems that way. So that's a very interesting outlook, and of course, Force Thirteen's UK branch will be all over that as well over the next few days. Uh, you can find uh, them which is run by me at the minute, but we're looking for people. If you are interested in the UK and uh, looking to get involved, um, then please make yourself known, because that would be really interesting if we could get a little team together. We are in the process of doing that. But uh, Kay, whilst you're still here, um, elsewhere around the world, what's going on? Well, some people may have heard that recently the um, temperature record for the inside the Arctic Circle was broken in... Siberia, of all places. Mm -hmm. The coldest place that's inhabited in the world is a town called Berkoyansk in central northern Siberia, inside the Arctic Circle, at 67 degrees north. Hmm. People um, think of Siberia as, and the Arctic Circle as always extremely cold, but they can have very short spells in summer where it does get up to about 30 degrees, but this is above and beyond, right? 
Yes, this is the first time the temperature above 100 Fahrenheit has been recorded in the Arctic Circle. That's 38 Celsius. Yes. And this means that this small town in Siberia has the greatest temperature range in the world. <laughs> going from minus 67.8 in the middle of winter to plus 38 Celsius, which is a range... Oh. Quite a big range. Yes, a very big range. 105.8 Celsius, or 190.4 Fahrenheit. That is absolutely tremendous in the... And that's only based on reliable sense. records. So, in short, you would be mad to live there. <laughs> yes, but <laughs> the local nomadic people have learned to adapt to the environment. Mm. Well, good Basically, on... <laughs> Yeah, but uh, oh, they get loads of snow in winter, and builds up, and it all melts into swamp in summer, and it freezes over in autumn. Yeah, crazy place to live, and a place that only has a few weeks of summer, and then they're plunged into really cold temperatures, and by the time we get on the other side of September, not much light either. I certainly wouldn't want to be there. But Kay, thank you very much for discussing the UK weather and the weather abroad. Thanks very much for your time. No problem. Happy to be here. Thank you. Heavy rainfall has caused problems in Eastern Europe, particularly in Ukraine and Romania, three dead in each. Also, one was killed in Istanbul. Heavy rainfall also occurred in Tov and Govisumba provinces in central Mongolia, killing two. Heavy rainfall also led to flash flooding in southwestern China on Monday, affecting over 10,000 and killing three. And in Nepal, a landslide occurred on Monday, killing at least four so far, and the number could be higher. And you can tell us about any weather events going on in your backyard. You can send us a message, video or image by contacting us on Facebook, Twitter or by email, contact at force13.com. And finally tonight, uh, of course, we can't leave without talking a little bit about what's going on in the tropics and what has been catching the eyes of quite a few people um, here and elsewhere is what's going on in the Indian Ocean. Will it, won't it? A potential late season, end of season, post season disturbance which could develop in the Indian Ocean uh, south of the equator. Well, to talk to me about it right now um, is Farhan from Indonesia, and um, you're watching this particularly closely because it's just off the uh, western coast of uh, Java and Sumatra. Yes, I am watching it very closely because it's very interesting because this practically never happened. In throughout the southern hemisphere, uh, this only happened a few times, and if it does form, and as of now the chances of are quite small, only 10 to 30 percent. But if it does form, it will be the first storm since Raquel. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Yeah, that's right. In 2015, it will be the first time since Raquel in 2015 that a storm in the southern hemisphere cross season from one season to another. It has a good chance of doing that. In yeah. my opinion, at least, pretty crazy. Which will, which will be very, very interesting to watch. I mean, I'm just generally very, very interested at how the Indonesian part of the Australian basin has become sort of come alive in the last three years. In the first six years of TCWC Jakarta being active, they only named three storm. Now, in just three years, they named six, with possibly a seven coming. That that's just insane for our standards. You're talking about the Jakarta area, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. definitely. Um, so, we've obviously got this going on right now. You've been, have you been looking at the satellite imagery recently? I know we've been seeing it regularly on the Tropical Weather Bulletins. It hasn't been looking that great, but um, there is a little bit of model support that it could be a weak depression. Yeah, looking from the satellite, it does, does, it does, like you say, doesn't look particularly good, but I personally think uh, 
it still has a chance although that's probably just the enthusiast is me wanting to see an, uh, a storm that cross season again <laughs> so that might not be accurate well who knows um and there was also another little disturbance um over further over in the ocean as well that the models were thinking about but that's not really materializing uh but certainly something very interesting in this region actually yeah actually actually uh i'm following in the server and ryan actually said that atcf has actually tagged 90s that's um that's this one isn't it yes the one further to west the one that is firmly inside the southwest indian ocean basin is it i thought it was referring to the one that we've been talking about well no you're right I've maybe, maybe. That, that, you're right okay. yeah um yes. so they've actually tagged that one um that was much which is very interesting shows you how far behind i am right now that was much much earlier today <laughs> um but yeah that's very interesting and maybe by the time this goes out they'll have tagged the other one that we've been talking about off indonesia as well um but do you want to tell us a little bit about some of those other recent storms that formed in the jakarta region well well i suppose we could just start from the first first one champaka in 2017 or in english pronunciation sampaka it was a huge surprise because no storm have gone that close to java it caught pretty much everyone by surprise including myself one moment it was all sunny and like dry as usual and all of a sudden for a week across java and Bali, just this rain floods landslide and everyone was wondering what is going on we look at uh, the news like oh a tropical cyclone it's like yeah well, that's interesting because cyclones to us in Indonesia are just like distant rumblings that we hear uh, sometimes during international break in the news yeah. programs. But now and, um, we actually experience it ourselves. Like we we could, we could hardly believe it. It's amazing. Yeah, and just quickly, we're running out of time. But uh, what is the at? I think you sort of touched on it there. The attitude in Indonesia to tropical cyclones are people that bothered? Do they like to track it as a hobby, as a lot of people do, or? Well, I'm not sure about the whole country, but here, mm, there's not much here in West Java, there's not really that much interest. People are just like, well, the weather is what we see, who cares about the forecast? <laughs> <laughs> Which is very unfortunate, but uh, that is, it is what it is. Yeah, I suppose so. Well, thanks very much for that angle. Is there anything else you'd like to just mention? Uh... Well, the only thing I really want to mention is that although I'm very new to this community, I've enjoyed it and I'm looking forward to stay in it for a very long time. And hopefully to see a couple more storm from uh, Jakarta, a couple more Indonesian cyclone. I would we'll, like to see that as well. We'll know where to go if that happens, definitely. Fine, thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome.